But they pay well though. Generations and it's thing. It wasn't for the money. Or you disagree? Excuse me? This is The Hustler's Corner. Love and blessings, hustlers and squatters, brothers and sisters from all over the world. Coming at you straight from Johannesburg in South Africa. It is The Hustler's Corner. First up, as usual, family tradition. We start with that um, like button on the count of one, two, three, click. Click, 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 click. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't forget to click the subscription button so you get to be part of the member of the family. The family is growing. We're now sitting on 140,000 subscribers. Yay. All because of you guys. And that's why we're here to celebrate today. We're not only celebrating our show for your growth and your support and love. Remember, guys, we drop episodes at 12 o'clock three times a week. And the goal when we started the year, we said our goal by the end of 2022 is 100,000 subscribers. And we've outdone ourselves because wow. of your support. It looks like we're going to end off this year with at least over 50, 150,000 subscribers. And we currently have got over 100 monthly paying members. So click that join button. If you think you like this content, you think it's worthy for you to um, contribute 10 rand, 40 rand, 100 rand, it's totally up to you. We'd appreciate it because it keeps our lights on. Nobody controls us. It's only you. We do all of this for you. Okay. Who are we celebrating their birthday today. I'm so excited because we're going to have a bit of bubbly. We're going to sing a happy birthday. But let me <laughs> give you a little bit about their background. She was, I won't tell you the year, South African singer. She's a performer, actress, born and raised in Soweto. Utswa Chuz. Utswa Onai She has performed in various singing and dancing competitions as a child, which I'd like to cover. Maybe let me not read a lot of that. But for now, let me tell you that she has been... Um, Nominated for Soapy Awards. She's a multiple award winner. She has done a lot of work on Soapies, acting, short films. She has done a lot of work singing. She grew up in a musical family. She's been a part of the struggle. Her journey has evolved into the person that um, she is or she is becoming. She's also an entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hustler's Corner. Latoya McKenna. Latoya Ma Makene Pudumo. Oh, Latoya Pudumo. Latoya Makene Pudumo. I'll say that again. Latoya Makene Pudumo. So it's Sutu, it's not Pulumo. Yeah, yeah, keep Pudumo. The L becomes a D. Oh, it's Sutu. Raleboha. Lekaiva Hulu. Nyabonga. Togoza. 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 Mbonga Kulu, Michabla, Lutu Svarashel. I think the last time we connected was at Massive Metro. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it was fun. And we had like a bit of a Mohodu Monday. We came. You guys set up all these traditional foods for us after the interview. It was a beautiful surprise. And I just want to say that um, thank you for the contribution your family has made in this country's arts and culture activism. Music has always played a very big voice in um, mobilizing, not only just locally, but, in, but internationally. Yeah. Some of us who grew up in the 80s, for our young kids out there and our youngsters might not know that. So I'm saying these things. They must understand yeah. their history, where we're coming from, that... Um, your father and uh, his brother had a band called Papa and Blood. Yeah. At some point that yeah. I grew up and I was like a little kid watching their music. At the time, the genre was called bubblegum music. You guys, I'm a piano. You do my piano now. Yeah. Back in those days, yeah. it comes from bubble, way before Kwaito even. Yeah. Bubblegum music oh or gosh. disco. That's what they used to call yeah, it. Yes, yes. After Abu Papa and Blood, your dad evolved, started his own career, his solo career. And then at some point when the struggle was very rife, and a lot was happening in the country. Yeah. He was the person who took them Zabalazo songs. Right. And he amplified that voice. Right. And he would rock stadiums and countries all over the continent. And people would be toy toying and their fists would be up in the air and you would see the dust rising just because of the energy and the synergy from him to the audience. It, he really, really affected um, a lot of people's decisions in this country. He affected... Uh, his music and how he sang conscientized people in such an amazing way. Um, that's why this is a man that I still love to honor. I honor him while he's alive. I don't want to be talking about a legend once he's passed on. We honor him every single day. We remind him every single day of who he is, what he's contributed to the freedom that we have today. 
Um, what a mess of spirit he is. I love my dad, you know. And you guys, when you came at Massive Metro, you extended an invite to uh, for us to come uh, at your father's Soweto home. Yeah. When he came, he treated us so well. Yeah. We sat down with him. I wish I was there that day. Ah, uh, that day. I invited I, you and I didn't even host you. <laughs> yeah, but it was nice though. I mean, you were busy. Uh, it was during the week. I figured you were probably working. On set, probably. But we had such a great time. He, he gave us an awesome interview. I think actually we must find that video and put it at the end of this interview. Wow. So if this interview is an hour, at the end of it, we'll put the video of that interview that I had with your father. Beautiful. Be and his birthday is coming up on the 16th of September. Oh, so is it? Yes. Wow. We are doing something for him. You should also come through. So let's honor you both on this episode. At the end, we'll put in that video. Because that video, I think it was like 15 or 18 minutes long. Bless. We'll put it to us. So then it becomes, they understand. After, the vo after you guys have watched this, at the end, you you'll watch what I was talking about when I say they invited okay, us. Okay, no, but why are you making my dad shine on my shine? <laughs> she gave birth. He gave birth to you. No, no, no. I understand that, but this is my hour. Okay, guys, because I, it's an hour, I've one, worked. two, three. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yay. Happy birthday, dear Latoya. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Hooray. Hooray. I'm joking. <laughs> you know, that man, I, I would not be here without that man. I'm a seed from his loins and I love sharing moments with him and I think it would be beautiful to have his little episode on at the end of this please do it now when he was making all of that history you were a little kid yeah as much as I was saying I was following his work as a yeah. little kid I did not understand um Zabalazo at the time right you, you know there were riots in the Those township yellow vans remember when the police vans were yellow before they became blue and white what was going on in your family? Because you had a father that was pro-black. He was not afraid to amplify that voice. Meanwhile, we all knew Utama Puno yeah. did not want such As people. Bulal. Exactly. Uh, in our family, things were hectic. We were uh, moving around every year. We never had stability. We never stayed in the same school for longer than a year because we just had to keep moving. At some point between... Sure, basically... There was a price out on his head. Uh, I remember one night, our family kind of like ducking because there were vans going up and down our street and they were shooting. They were shooting and saying, Blondi, 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 so tall, so tall. Um, and so we moved around a lot. We Up until I was in about grade four, it's only from grade four that I started staying in the same school because things started like stabilizing then that was in 1994 things started cooling down a bit although things were still hectic um but my dad should have been one of those people who should have gone into exile he considered it at some point that stubborn nature in him just kicked in and um he decided he's not leaving his country he's not leaving his people He's not going to let anyone stop him from doing what he needs to do. If he's got to go, he's got to go. He had literally just put his life on the line for the country, for this country, for the freedom of our people. It was hectic. It was crazy. But it was also fun. You were young. Did it you understand? It was fun. I, our parents have always been very open about letting us understand what is going on in our lives. So we understood, but I don't think I understood the magnitude of it at that age. It's only as I got older where I was like, whoa. All I really, really understood was life was fun. We traveled a lot. We got to go to a lot of shows with daddy and mommy. Uh, we hosted a lot of artists in our home. Daddy then started the first independent record label in this country which was KGM Records and he flew high and he was producing some of the greatest artists that were coming out of this country and and things were beautiful and life was beautiful and we were exposed to a very very good life you know um, at that time black people were still not really living in the suburbs but we were and we were in private schools and we had a good life, so they tried to protect us as much as they could from 
the politics, but they also made sure that we were very aware of it all. What schools did you go to? A lot. <laughs> a lot. And it's important to, to name them because the kids who go there now, they probably don't even know. When you mention, oh, wow, she went to our school, we didn't know. Okay. Type so, of thing, you know? Uh, in grade one, I was at... Um, Okay, this was um. This is in the township. Uh, uh, yeah, a colored school. I, actually, it, the name has just escaped me. Okay. I will remember it. Okay. Uh, grade two, I think I H Harris. Grade three, Dominican Convent. Grade four, Saxonwald. And from grade four, I finished at Saxonwald Primary School. So you are a fully, fully Joburg person. And then, you went even to Joburg schools. <laughs> and then, and then I graduated. At the National School of the Arts. So yeah, Joburg born, born and bred. Definitely Joburg born, born and, bred. and bred. Grew up from a timer who was an and activist. I, I really wish I can remember the first school. I think it is important for these kids to realize that I come from these backgrounds. What, what was my primary school? What was my grade one? You'll remember it. I'll remember it. That's why we do these interviews because there's some kids out there. I, that's what I love about the internet. Yeah. It penetrates to places that you can never thought mm. or you can never think. And the other day I posted something literally a week ago on, on Facebook. I went on live actually. It was on a Monday, last week Monday. I went on a live for like five minutes, not even long, for no particular reason. Yeah. I just kind of felt it's a Monday morning. I must have an exam. But guys, I just decided to go live to encourage you. Aww. Whatever I might be going through, I do know that it's tough out there, guys. Like words like that, you know? I know you do that a lot. And I even love how you pay it forward, how people who have started businesses who are trying to promote their businesses because you know you've got such a huge following. I see you retweeting and giving yes, them space and just giving everyone a chance just to rise a little bit. And I've always thought that was such a beautiful, beautiful thing for you to do. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I know this is your interview. Can we discuss your new journey, your new way of life and the tree hugging? I think it's so cute. I'm, I'm humbled. Mm? I'm, I'm very humbled. And, and just to finish that point, that's why I was saying it's important. That's how important it is for us to mention the corners we grew up in, the primary schools that mm. we went to. Because sometimes we're no longer there that often, but the kids there, some of them, they don't know. that I actually can be something. To answer your question, I think it's a beautiful... Um, W.R. Goliath. Oh, W.R. Goliath. Goliath. Yeah. Oh. Is it in Clearland schools, I say? Is it in Elders? Is it in Newlands? Yeah, it's, some, it's somewhere there in... Western, uh, um, yeah, it's somewhere there in West those Berry. areas. Okay. Um, and you must also understand now, sorry to cut you no, off. No, go right ahead, yeah. Uh, because we would have been subjected to Bantu education, right? And we know how aggressive and how deep sometimes Bantu education got. Um, my parents strategically took a decision to keep us on my mother's surname for a little while. That was also one of their strategies. Also for protection for us, just to not be too exposed. So they kept us on my mother's surname for like the first few years of our life, Boysons. And that was also strategic on their part. So we wouldn't have to go into Bantu education. Because remember in those days, there was Bantu education, which was at the lowest. Then you had the Clearland school education, which got a little better before you got to white school education. So um, we were lucky to be able to go to those schools. But eventually, I'm sure by about grade three or so, they had already changed our names to my Ken. So, yeah, apartheid did a lot to a lot of people, hey? It did a lot to a lot of people. That's why I also appreciate the fact that it's, it's, I speak to a lot of people all the time from all walks of life, and it's a beautiful thing. I'm very humbled to be able to be doing that for a living. But I also get fascinated by Johannesburg people, mm. you know, especially Johannesburg kids who grew up around that time. Mm. Um, because you need to remember, some of us who are blessed enough, or I don't know, it's a blessing or... But I always look at things from the positive side. We lived first of, uh, first half of our lives, like towards the end of apartheid. Right. And then as we're getting older, we live the other, you know, parts of better half. What, right. Adult life. Our adult lives. Yeah. In this so-called, what you would call New South Africa, right? Yeah. So we sort of have got vague memories of what was going on when we were kids. Yeah. Amatia, kiss, I'm a soldier. Yeah. My hippie, my look, she, yeah. And that's why it's always beautiful when I get to interview Joburg people because then... People would say 1976, the struggle started in yeah. Orlando, in yeah. Johannesburg, in Soweto. 
So a lot of Johannesburg people have got a different story to tell about their own experiences. Yeah. Whether it was in the eastern part of Johannesburg at the time, about Tembisa, about Makatlehong, or whether it was Boma, Kakiso, mm. Soweto especially, <laughs> you know? Especially. And now you're a Soweto person, and that's why I'm yeah. very excited to, to, to hear your story. And I want you to take your time. I mean, we're not in a hurry. Yeah. The, the struggle happened. Your father was brave enough to work hard and provide his kids good education. Because those schools that you're mentioning, based on the time where we come from and based on the person that you are, you're a very intelligent person. Those Thank are good you. schools. Thank you very much. But as much as my parents really worked hard to give us a very good life, what I loved about them was how they, for them, it was a thing to always remind us where we come from. So just because we happen to be a little more privileged to be on the other side of the coin... You know, even while we were going to college schools, Ning Ning, Gary Holiday, or Ning Ning, you know, when we're visiting my grandmother, we get sent to Nirnaliti uniform, you know, our black gym dresses, waiting for us. We know that we're going to school with our cousins around the corner. They made sure that we know where we come from, and it was all about keeping us earthed and rooted and humble. And for us not to, uh, for us to understand that they have worked hard to give us this, but for us to remember that this is where we come from. So we spent a lot of time Kokasi. We spent a lot of time Kosoet. We were taken to every township you could think of. My parents never spared a moment to always remind us about where we come from to earth us, to root us. It was very important for them. And I think it was one of the most beautiful things that they could have done for us and especially for me as a child. I mean, being where I am right now, how I've blown up, how my career just kept on growing and growing and growing. You know that people in our industry literally get to a point where we, you, you, you've, you've got one or two ways to go. You're either going to make it or you're not. You're either going to, be successful and you're going to be and you're going to do this thing really really well and be focused and sober even though we're having our it's your birthday it's your birthday yeah, yeah, guys yeah. by the way we're celebrating her birthday <laughs> happy birthday to her go to her social media platforms what's your instagram at latoya mckenna p go to her instagram go flood it with happy birthdays there even if it's a day it's a couple Thank of days you. later and what's your twitter at Latoya McKenna P. Go, go tag on Twitter as well. Say happy birthday. <laughs> and then my Facebook page yeah. uh, is Latoya McKenna. And then you're multilingual. English, Afrikaans, Sutu, the Zulu I learned, Epechweni. Um, but yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I, I love being able to kind of fit in everywhere. A lot of kids go to the school, National School of the Arts in Bramfontein, but yeah. not a lot of them end up making it big time. That's true. What happened? What trajectory did you... you well, we know you, the trajectory was upwards from, from the school. But, but take us through the journey. What happened after you graduated from the school? How did you get into the business? Uh, remember, I was at school and working. I had never stopped working from the age of nine. Mm -hmm. I was presenting on... At nine, I presented on KTV at... 10, I became a presenter on um, what then became uh, Yo! TV today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at 11, I was the anchor presenter for the Disney UNESCO Children's Summit in Paris. At 12, so basically my career had been going. Um, by the time I was in high school and a lot of commercials, by the time I was in high school at NSA, I was doing drama uh, my first two years were drama, and um, we, then we started School Girls, which was our singing group with my sisters. So now uh, I'm in school. Not only do I have my academic subjects, but I've also got my art subjects. So so it's schedule sikuhele sinje, but I'm also in studio and going on tour with my sisters, um, and then by like. Third year in high school, I, I switched. I went to music. I went to contemporary music. Um, and so, yeah, that's where...
we graduated. And before the end of that year, I had already been selected as a presenter for Idols. I was a, a VJ on Channel O. I remember. I was. <laughs> Those so days. All of this Some happened. Of born, you guys were the coolest bunch. All of this happened before the age we of 18. We all wanted to be like you guys. You guys were the yeah. Channel O VJs. Born. And Soul Buddies. And the acting oh, crept in as well. Yeah. I was in the first season of Soul Buddies. So all of this happened for me before the age of 18. Jo, 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 and jo, then jo. at 18, Nangene Pesuen. You, you got into a Pesuen from 18? Oh, nah. I mean, I thought it was just recent years. 20 years of Sanga, my darling. Wow. 20 years. What's the process? It's a lot. And it's beautiful that you're asking me. <laughs> it's a lot. About, about, about um, the journey that one is going through, which is very beautiful. I'm learning so much. But um, a lot of people out there, kind of things into that we take for granted and we just think everybody knows. But when they get spoken about and there was just like, a lot of people don't know these things. The other day I was interviewing somebody who's also a spiritual healer and people were surprised. Like, oh, wow, I didn't know this. Oh, I didn't we know this. We don't have enough. I, I mean, my wife and I were just talking last night with um, uh, another Gobela, someone who we love with all our hearts, you know. Um, we call her Toyani. And uh, we were sitting and talking about starting to document a lot more about our work, about our spiritual path. Obviously, there's a lot of sacred things that we can't just put out there in the world, sa sacred rituals. But we need to start documenting more so that information is, is more accessible. So, hey. so that people can... So we need to create libraries that people can go into. Thank you. Um, to 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 get to, to get access to information, you need to remember we come from an ancient period where our forefathers in ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet had documented a lot of information. We had libraries filled with information. The books were stolen though. They weren't just stolen, some were burned. The Remember, they were strategic. Were burned intentionally. The Westerners told us. Books, cool were told, were, books were taken to Greece. Before they took the books, they came and they got knowledge from us. And because we are such a giving nation and sharing, we weren't trying to keep our information to ourselves. You know, we were and still are um, a people who see someone, a stranger walking in from the gate, down there, and someone is walking. And you don't even know who's coming, but you're already boiling water and putting on a pot because you know someone needs to eat. That is our history and how we are as a people. So when these Westerners came and they needed a place to sleep, we provided them with a place to sleep and we shared information with them. And they took this information and took it back to Europe or maybe in some vault at the Vatican, who knows? And our information is sitting somewhere, it's hidden somewhere. And the same information that has been taken from us was used to empower them more and to disempower us, you know? I am, I'm getting a bit... No, no, go in, go in. No, we speak about these things. It's important. So I'll tell you, this is what we speak about on yeah. this platform. We were, I get as much people as possible speak about that type of information yeah. because I've got a lot of young people that watch the platform and all the time they're appreciating the fact that this knowledge is being shared. Yeah. And you do know in the age of the Aquarius, a lot of people are going through their own awakening. So let's talk. Don't be afraid. Let's talk. No, no, I'm not afraid to talk. I just thought maybe I'm just rambling and you've got a mm -hmm. thousand more questions. Mm -hmm. This is not TV or radio. Okay. We've got five hours. Let's go. Let's go in. Let's go in. So, you know, even medicines, Western medicines, if you look at pharmaceuticals, right? They've, they, they learned so much and they still continue to come and they learn about what we do with our plants and our herbs. Then they go back and then they turn them into tablet form or whatever it is with all the messed up chemicals. And this is why... So they remixed our medicine as well. Absolutely. Just like they remixed our stories in the Absolute, Bible. Absolutely. Is, it, like is, it is it true that they remixed our stories in the Bible? I think so. I mean, I definitely think so. I don't even believe... I believe that there was a Jesus, a Yeshua. Um, so they changed the names. Yeshua. Yeshua is the original name. Yeah, right? I understand. But I'm just saying all the other names, Abu Abraham, Abu, were they called I that? I think the things did, 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 
get changed over time. Uh, these are my theories. These, okay. I'm sharing okay. with you my visions and my thoughts and my meditations. Thank and you, ma'am. Books that I've learned. Um, a lot was changed. You, you talk about, I mean, if you go deeper, deeper into m more authentic books, you'll realize that there was a Yeshua, a son of God, but he had skin as dark as Brass. Bona. Mm. And he had Bronze. hair as curly as Wool. Togoza. Mm. What does that tell you That's about That's in Revelations, how, right? How does that, what does that tell you about how Yeshua looked? He looked just like you. Mm. He was a black man. The original Jews were not, they, they were dark skinned. They were dark skinned, dark melanin skinned. Mm. This is what our history is about that's been taken away from us and it's been hidden away from us because the only way that you could penetrate, enter Africa and, 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 and get our power and our riches and our minerals and our resources was to divide and conquer. And the only way to divide and conquer was to separate the families, to, to divide and conquer was to take their spirituality away from them. Once you, someone is without spirituality, you are numb. Mm. You are easy to, to, to be taken over. You are easy to access. Mm. A lot of young people are asking, Butsubusi, so we are confused. Yes, we are hearing a lot of this information, but we are young and confused. We don't know. Is... Bible, the, is the Bible, the King James Version, the right book? And if not, was the Bible remixed? Or is the Old Testament then the right book? If not, are you guys saying these are our stories where our names changed and our stories were remixed? Are you saying part of it is true, part of it is not true? What is right? What should we believe? Because we are confused. I think at the end of the day, you know, I think it's beautiful to read the Bible, whatever version you want to read. I think it's beautiful to fill ourselves with knowledge. Thank you. Knowledge. Even, read even all of them, all the way to the Quran. Oh, so you fill yourself with fill knowledge. Fill yourself Thank with you, knowledge. And then take a moment with yourself and sit and meditate over what you've read. We've all, you don't have to be a Sangwama to have a spirit that guides you, to have intuition. You just have to take a moment out with yourself and just sit and speak to your God and speak to your God self or whatever or whoever it is that you believe in. Take a moment for self, even if you are not speaking to anyone and you just sit with yourself and just try and listen. I think there's a lot of revelations that come through that. Whatever you are looking for, you will be led to the right answers, you know? There's too much information for us to be able to say, this is right, this is wrong. Some of it is right, but it's been tweaked a bit. And sometimes it's just one word that's tweaked, but it changes the entire sentence. Mm. One word. Mm. Um, it's a lot of information, but read. Open yourself up to so much, to knowledge. Knowledge is power. Be, be knowledge hungry. Power hungry. Um, and the, you'll, therein you'll find the answers about what resonates with you. It's about what resonates with you. It's not about what's right and wrong according to what we were taught and according to, because we've got Christianity, but we've got so many different kinds of churches all over the world. One church is saying to the other church, no, you're wrong. Other one is saying to the other one that you're wrong. We've had wars started over religion. So you need to go with what works with your oh, spirit. Oh, wow. Guys, once again. Really? Happy birthday to you. Baby. Happy birthday Baby. to you. Oh, this is so cute. Happy birthday, dear Latoya. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. One more time, guys. Laura, let's go. Happy birthday Happy. to you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Uh huh. Happy birthday, dear Latoya. Togaza. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hip hip. Thank 
candle. You have to blow the candle. The candle. Uh, no, my dog already blew the candle. Oh, wow. So I want to go more. Togazani. <laughs> okay. I oh, really so beautiful. shouldn't do this on screen. I'm no, so go right I'm going to have something in my teeth. I go right ahead. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Red velvet. You know, it's okay. Thank you. What does this mean, though? What does what mean? So I'll go back to our, our, our conversation. I'm saying, as you reach another year. Oh, and I heard. Like, you, do you reflect? You were a little scared to hear me say. Thank you. 38. I am 38 this year. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. I do. I always reflect. I'm always sitting with myself, thinking about my life, thinking about my spiritual journey, where I am. Am I happy with myself? This is nice. This is yummy. Yeah, this is nice. This is yummy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is nice, guys. Mm -hmm. That's everything. You know, in this day and age, especially now, with this pandemic that we've just had, with COVID, I think being able to even make it to your, your a new year, to your birthday, is it's such a blessing. It's something, life is something that you appreciate and it's something to be so grateful for because we saw people lose their families in numbers. The world was going through such a devastating time. I think all of us began to appreciate the little things in life. If you didn't get that lesson out of COVID and this pandemic, um, I feel for you because I think one of the biggest lessons was to learn to not take blessings, great or small, for granted. The fact that you woke up is a blessing. The fact that you got into your car and made it to work and got home safely is a blessing. The fact that you didn't have to you didn't have to lose your family in a ward where you are isolated and no one can see you and no one can visit you. I mean, we took things like that for granted. People were not allowed to visit their sick loved ones in hospital. Who wants to lie in a hospital on their own and not see anyone around you? One thing that makes a person get better really quickly is visits. People coming in, showing you love, all those little things were taken away from us. It was devastating. Um, what does being able to celebrate my birthday mean to me? I am grateful because it tells me that my work here is not done and that there's still so much more that the universe expects me to do. And my prayers are always that I'm on the right path and that I'm always aligned with the universe and the universe's plans for me. And that I do God and myself and my family proud. That's what every birthday means to me. Wow. Yeah. Enjoy it, Siswami. Thank you, Mkulu. Mm. Enjoy it, Kule. Kubege, ushere information na banye. Chawaz. Kubege, wenzu mechugo. Kubege, wenzu isibusi se mparatin. Chawaz, Mkulu. Siya bonga kesh. Na siti sa abandu bomoya, kushuktin logo. I think we all are. We're, we're spirit. We are all spirit. Um, there's a holy trinity. It begins, it's a holy triad. It begins with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we were created, life was breathed into us. God breathed life into us. Um, I like to look at creation as like an angel sitting somewhere in heaven with God and and God creating a life because he knows that there's a certain purpose, but there's an angel, a soul that needs to go into this life. So we are spirit first. This flesh is here to carry us on this earth. But this is why it is so important for us to be aligned with spirit because 
we are spirit first. That's why we are 70% water. Uguba umundu womoya means that we are water. We are water. That's why Tina Inyanga si sebenzisa amanzi gakulu. Because we understand how it resonates with us and how it re-energizes us and how it reconnects us. Uguba umundu womoya umkulu is to be earth. It's to listen and to understand. And I honestly, honestly think, as a band, we all have that in us. It's just some of us are so disconnected that we don't listen. Um, we've been distracted by so much in life, our phones, our TVs, um, just busyness of life, that we don't even take a moment just to take a very deep breath and breathe out. Inhale and exhale, which is so important when it comes to just pulling yourself back towards yourself. We are so distracted and so busy that we think we need to go to everyone, to Inyanga, to priests and everyone, just to teach us how to bring ourselves back to each other. We are here for assistance, but we, when God made us, he made us in his image, which means the God in me is the God in you. The power I have is the power you possess. It's just some of us have been able to access it and, um, and reignite it more easily. And because of our calling, we are able to tap into it more easily. But we all have an instinct. We all have a gut instinct. We all have a life inside of us. And this voice inside of us that is breathing and constantly talking to us. And... That for me is more. You say to you, you say to me, or you share with us that for you the journey started when you were as young as when you were 18. Mm -hmm. What happened? How did you know? Did it came did it come through dreams? What happened and what was the process? Oh, cool. uh, did you reject it? You were still too young, ah. you wanted to live your youth. What happened? <laughs> Kakula, kakula, one way. In and out of hospital every week. Parents were running me to, and this was starting from like the age of 17. Uh, they were running me to the best specialist, the best ev everything. Hi, nebasa kriniks, batuwa. Eventually, I woke up one morning and I was paralyzed from the waist down. Paralyzed? No feeling in my legs. Couldn't walk, couldn't lift my legs, couldn't waist down. Rush me to the hospital again, and they're looking and they're looking, MRIs, CAT scans, everything. People are not finding what is wrong with me. They're not finding if there's an injury in my spine. Doctors were literally getting to a point where they were starting to give up, and uh, someone very close to my family eventually said, have you guys tried because and they rushed me to they rushed me to a sangoma and we got there and this woman just started just doing work just doing work and I'm in between. At some point, she just said, Mastandas. Everyone went into prayer. And at that point, her husband, who happens to be like a prophet, whose third eye is open, it's like, Nga papa masonga ti, like, what is going on? He just says, Can I just share with you what I saw? I just saw this child coming out of water against my. I can say my body and bees. And I looked at my family and I was like, that's so strange. I literally just saw the same thing. And they were like, I'm And I was like, oh, okay, that's all I need to do to get better. When do I start? <laughs> Little did you know what it entailed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, boy, nah. It entailed 
a lot, but it was also where my healing began. Like Ngapola, same time, just because Ngavuma. Same time. Now Vuma or Vuma in, which I'm gonna walk this journey and um, embrace my calling. Nyola Papa and do what? How do you know what to do? Yes. You know, not every Sangoma goes into initiation school because Mela Allah Abany. Sometimes you go in because it's your own healing and mm. you need to heal your bloodline. Um, but a lot of us do lapa because it is part of our work. And it uh, was the process entails a lot. It's learning how to reconnect with yourself, reconnect with your, your heritage, African heritage, African rituals, African processes, how to get to your deeper self and to learn to respect yourself so deeply. To respect those who walk before you. To understand that, yes, Jesus, because he lived and died, right? But Leviticus says that we shouldn't bow to dead people. You see where the confusion comes. Mm. Why can we buy, bow to Jesus who lived and died? And he was a close. But we can't bow to umkulu, ukoko, bega pia langit, ilo zilam. Eh, abo ni confusion. Laba shaya kona. Eh, mo bara shapi leng teng butuku. I can serve Jesus, but he lived and died. He walked the earth like you and me. He was a physical mis- he, manifestation of the higher power ukulunku. Togo zamkulu. And he lived in real life, so which means who he so there's confusion there. You and I are a physical, a, a physical a manifestation mm. of God. Do you get what I'm saying? We're made in His image. So mangiifa. Why can I not? Why why should I be forgotten? Buried and dead and gone. Yet in secret they they are doing our rituals. The same people who caused the confusion in the Bibles. You must understand the day is we are in now. This is a very... Uh, this, this plan goes so far back. What we are living in right now is an ancient, ancient plan of destroying ours, uh, us, our kind, our people. It's like a, they are... a ahead of us was probably like 200, 300 years. They they are ahead of us. They knew what this plan is and they set it up nicely. There's the confusion. Mm. You just spoke now about the third eye. What is the third eye? What is the pineal gland? It is. And how do I open it? There's so many ways to open it. So, um, meditation. Or maybe let's start. What is it first? Okay. Your third eye is the eye that you don't see, but it's situated right here. And this is the eye that helps you see beyond the physical. When your third eye is open, you are able to to listen and to be instinctive and to see. But can I tell you a secret? Hey, wait about it, where? Do you know that the fluoride in our tap water closes the third eye? Is that in America or even in South Africa as well? Everywhere. The fluoride in water, if there's fluoride in water, it closes the third eye. Everything around us has been so strategic about keeping us numb and in zombie form. let Let us not take them too fast. For, yes. the, for them to understand what you're about to say, let's start by defining first, how do you open the third eye? Um, a very big way is aligning your chakras. Because remember now, we've all been going through life. We've got our seven chakras, your head chakra, your eye chakra, your throat chakra, your heart chakra, here, here. We've got seven chakras. And sometimes our chakras are off alignment as well. 
we're not vibrating on the right level. Um, if you can find someone, there are people who specialize in this, in realigning the chakra. But how I realign my chakra, especially when I'm feeling I'm off vibration or I'm feeling really weak or sick, I do exactly what you do. The tree hugging. Except I still do sometimes look over my shoulder to make sure. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what I generally do just to realign myself and bring my, my, my vibrations back and align my chakra, I take off my shoes. I go for a walk outside. I especially try to find grass. And I literally stand and I take deep breaths and I talk to Mother Earth. And one of the things that I chant to Mother Earth is I am sorry for contributing to how humankind is destroying you. We have destroyed you. Please forgive me. And I literally feel the vibrations from Mother Earth just kind of tapping into my soul and my spirit. I go and I touch a tree. Um, I don't exactly hug the tree like you do, honey. <laughs> but I go touch a tree, even if I'm doing something like this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if I go and I touch a leaf and I sit and I just speak to the tree's energy and I ask for healing and alignment, it's a great way to start aligning your chakras if you can't afford to go to someone to do it for you. It's about resetting yourself, reconnecting with nature, right? Find yourself some beautiful music, like meditation music. Calming music. Calming music. If you want to read books on how to meditate, because some people's minds are so busy, um, even if you say, no, just go and lie down and just breathe and listen to yourself, or just sit and breathe and listen to yourself. Some people really do need to be coached and trained how to meditate, just to help stall their minds. Is there a Vanek word for meditation? Like, what is to meditate in Sesotho, Kapanga, Sizulu? Yining a saint, meditator. I'm not a saint, I'm not a saint. Okay. You can't be a saint. 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 And we don't do that enough. We go to work, we come back, we're busy, it's family, da, 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 da. By the time we sleep, we just sleep. You haven't had a moment to just breathe. We don't take enough time out for ourselves. I think these are important ways just to realign yourself and open your third eye and to open your chakras. Crystals are a great way too. You can walk into, you know, any shop where they sell crystals. <sighs> you don't, I'm not even going to tell you what crystals to get because generally a crystal will call you. And you will reach out to the crystals that you need. And as long as you frequently cleansing your crystals, like if you know you've been using them, you can just cleanse them underwater and literally envision that negative energy come out of your crystals and positive energy coming into them. But you can also just put them under a full moon, wash them, put them under a full moon and cleanse them with the full moon's energy. I love to work with the moon a lot as well. Uh, how else to realign yourself and open up your chakras, um, what else do I do? I, I, I put water out when there's a full moon and I let my water recharge. I even, so that water sits and recharges under the full moon's energy. You can drink that water, you can bath with it. It's really, really good. If you've got personal things, things that are very personal to you, Take them out and give them a rinse, recharge them under the full moon's energy. These are things we take for granted. We see a moon and we think it's just moon. You can even recharge your work under the sun's energy. Um, sure, nature is what we take for granted and we don't respect nature enough. And nature is what really, really aligns and balances us. I felt myself get really, really, really sick and feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to get better. And just going out and putting my feet on the grass and touching the grass and doing what I just told you and reaching out to the tree and the leaves and everything has literally, I think, saved me from a lot. I've felt the earth 
penetrate my spirit and heal me. Um, it's powerful methods. I was speaking to a friend yesterday, actually, who's, I don't know how this woman is still alive today. This woman went through anything and everything. She's much older than I am. She's in her 60s. Anything and everything that you can think of that anyone can ever go through. What about in life, my shire, health. Over 30 operations. This, that, that, when one thing finishes, the other one starts. Then she had to bury her son. Mm, then mm, mm, two weeks mm, after mm. her son, her best friend, like everything. Thing was just has just been crumbling around her. Mm. She was telling me yesterday because we haven't spoken in a couple of years. Um, she's, I was, you know, saying how's your son, who's also my friend, the the one who's still with us and alive. She was like, hey, you know, nekile warit kangwa no na, because linda neke wana kure mutu o unalibu hipi nyana. Gabona umo, umo. Hey, never le worried. Do you know today me o ufodil? She's at her healthiest and her happiest because she's a hippie herself now. She does little shroom, mush, the shroom processes, the this, the that. She walks bare feet most of the time. She was like. Toy, you won't believe I'm like a hippie. I'm a hippie now. She says, and I've never been happier and healthier. We have one. Balance and nature. And I'm a hippie. I'm very here. But pants, lavant. Inyanga. Balapa. There's doctors in Buhippie. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether you do it in our traditional sense or whether you go to a, a shaman or a shaman that's white, or a this or a that, it doesn't matter. It's about earthing yourself. The only thing that matters is earthing yourself. She is at her healthiest. I was, and literally as I got on the phone with her and I saw this message from her about, oh my gosh, since I last saw her, so much more happened. I was getting visions and I was like literally about to say to her, hey, Coco, you've gone to all these Western doctors and let's do things traditionally. It's so traditional. And for me, I'm open to all sorts of healing. And I'm open to continue learning because it's those Islam and my angels and my ancestors are always exposing me to so many new ways of learning. Candle magic. Um, just candles. When I say candle magic, pray, just praying with candles. What candle does what? How to use a candle? How to ignite something? How to? Tandas how to? Bona, bona. Mm. You don't always need muti, uktandaz. Muti is just, just there. It's about realigning yourself and recentering yourself. Whether it's candle magic. Hey, I've even been reading up on some mm, new kinds of ma magic of late. I just read. I just read and things just ca come to me. And when I say magic, I'm talking about M-A-G-I-C-K, white magic. I uktagata, not buloi. Not black magic. I cannot connect with anything like that. I cannot connect in darkness or in negativity because I am a white lighter. Yinubuloi, tzagat. Yeah. It's those things that you see people doing there. And people are becoming more open about it, eh? Have you been seeing? Is it invisible with, with the broom veil? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are images. Liver <laughs> exe. But no, I'm not talking about talking about talking about But but it can. But people buy lawyer on mood. Of course, Mkulum. And I want to buy talking about 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 that generally, generally works. Mm, I, you know, the thing is, I don't want people to go around thinking for it just because mm, it says boo. Uh, kupa shampoo po and oh, kupa lemon fire. And you said to me, I see saying na yo. Ugutting zohamba. And it gives me a right. Uguk taga chang in tizi. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And this is where putting yourself in an energy bubble comes in. This is where those little washes with the moon water and sea water come in. Just to cleanse yourself 
of these negative energies. Because people do, I want to buy law and please but I should not have the power to law and please If you are a prayerful person, mm. you go to bed and you say, Uncle Uncle Wam, Ngbongalelanga, Chosan Pokokram Kul, Kilebohela, Litsatin Lena, thank you for being with me. Please continue protecting me from all harm and evil and all my enemies. You've already broken whatever curses that they are trying to put on you. Other things, yes, they do need a little more, much more than just a moon water wash or something. You need to go uguti uyo lashwa, entabeni, emfuleni, ezini zinto zizikti nguti ungene in treatments because other people are really, really ruthless out there. They are ruthless. But like a lawyer, unyel. Ruthless mkulu. And I think it's important to. And, and when I say, Tagati, you know, it's not just us as black people that know about this and this wayward way of life. It's, it's everyone. Nabilungu, we Tagati. I've heard of them. I've heard of people coming together and putting hexes on each other. There's people who come together in prayer. All they do is pray to wish one person something bad. What do they call them? What prayers? I want to buy taga at some point. How you do it, to how, what the way was that you decided to do it? That's how you must be strong. In as fine. You must be strong in your faith, no? Must be rooted, spiritually rooted. Mm. Or have something that 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 grounds you. Mm. Sit in something, whether you choose to believe in God or Allah, or Emma Josini, or the earth, whatever you believe, you've gotta have something that centers you. Is that, that is what faith is? Lately, when I hear the rhetoric, or let me say, when I hear a lot of um, information on social media, I'm hearing people refer to the universe as God. Is yes. God and the universe the same thing? Absolutely. I think so. But see how you want to translate it. Because I call the universe God. I refer to the universe as her or him. But if, whatever form you want to come into me as or come to me as, or into me, let me say into me, it is the universe. The universe is us. Um, I know when we speak of the universe, we're thinking, hey, galaxies and stars and everything. You are the universe. The universe exists in here. How I see the world is different from how you see the world. So your universe is your light, how you see it. That's why when I speak of God, I speak of my God. Mm. And when people decide to attack me on social media, and I say to them, eh, eh, serve your God, let me serve my God. And let's respect each other's beliefs. Let's respect each other's beliefs. Do you know, a Satanist can walk in here now, and I get the it's his belief. Because you've decided to do things in this way? Why trying to get... Why must I disrespect you? That's your God. That's your universe. These are my choices and they work for me. If that works for you, good for you. I could possibly sit and have a cup of tea with the Satanist and just sit and engage and find out so much about their way of life, how you got here, what is your thinking, how do you guys work? Do you understand? And respectfully so. Respectfully so. Because respect is everything in my work. Do you, do you consult? Do people come for you for consultations? Absolutely. Do you help heal people? Absolutely. I consult. Uh, I do virtual consultations as well. Lovely. Uh, and really, I was very close off to virtual consultations, but COVID happened and people were just like, Goko seak dinga, seak dinga, seak dinga. And I kind of sat with myself, and I was one day and I was just like, is this thing even possible? I'm a virtual consultations. And I realized, but do you realize you've been consulting virtually for your entire life? Because 
and wa wa wutwa gore motho o ha sharp and ya mbula but you don't realize ukuthi uya mbula kodwa uyomtsheli ukuthi aye egogo yenza songa so and uhambe wrong la or asilungisela so dala ubula nge phone and then um nyalapha futhi isikhulisa amathwasane um, and then how do people get in touch with you in case they want help, they want to consult, they want to... Do you have a website? I do have a website, but I'm reconstructing the website right now. So I've just been using the business line um, for the consultations, which is 083... No, no, it's okay. We'll put it on the screen now. Yeah. 491. Okay. 083491. It's the first time I'm seeing a South African celebrity say they had a number live on... No, it's not my <laughs> personal camera. number. Okay. Oh, and please, do not send porn. My, <laughs> my PA is... Are you serious? I'm literally about to ah, lose guys, my PA. Ah, No, okay. Okay. Let me not assume Nangi Tabafeta. Let me not assume it's guys. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Let me not even ask you a type of porn are you getting. Like, we are going to be a little bit. We are going to be Okay, well, there's an automated ma message that comes on. And then, ning, ning, jigi, jigi, go, go. Uh, no, let's not continue that. Uh, <laughs> Let it go. Uh, but wait. Uh, but wait. I'm about to lose such a good PA. No, it's because okay. Because she's just like. Tell her to be strong, man. I've had enough. Tell her to be strong. How do you, um, or what is your take on. As much as there's a lot of awakening that is happening, a lot of people are okay. also starting to get a lot of confusion from a lot of people who are twassing mm. and who are becoming, um, let me not necessarily say inyanga, a lot of them are becoming izangoma. And um, all of it, I mean, I like, the fact, I mean, I like the fact that the conversation is happening, me right? Too. Yes, too. whether good or bad, right or wrong, but I like the fact me that too. that's happening. But I also just want to hear your take as well on... Mm -hmm. Then the young people who jump into it maybe as a trend to think they can become stars and as fake sangomas or and I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a fake sangoma. I don't know. I'm a fake. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. You know, you've even heard people. I've heard people say to me, I wish I was you. I wish I had a calling like you. Like, and you was like, hey, Coco, it's so cool. It's a blessing and a curse. It's a big responsibility to carry. Mm. And sometimes you walk into a gobela space and we have one good gunum twana la mar wamutra. Aw hoodile hantle ebunyangin. Maukulisile umunda wa ko gatle. Uzo muzwa lumuntu guti ay agana agana ilus. When you woke, when you've learned how to start super properly, you will know what I look like I'm going to lose. Got to have some or those who do fly by night, just saying, I'm going to say it three weeks, see. And you're like, ah. So well, you also help about to us, Owen? Wow, that's beautiful. And what, what does the process take? Without revealing what you don't have to reveal. Shami, you were even asking me about my process. And you can <laughs> see I keep doing this with I the can process. Hear, but you don't have to say what you're not comfortable with. Mm, it's just a lot that's sacred. Okay. Um, but it is basically um, where, where I come from. Ukulusi Zozi. Ukulisa Mandao. It's Tunya, which is Umoya, the one you're very interested in. Um, of course, Nzunza. Uh, all of them. All of them. I, I round them all up like this, but I can't do that because I've been gifted in that way. There are Nyangas that cannot Kulisa Umundao because Aba Kulisa in that way. Um, they have obunyanga or ikelanje, you know? Hey. So there's things that they are not permitted to do because they can't do it. Which means, 
for three months or six months, however long, because some of them take a year of your time. And if you're only doing Umkosila, you didn't need a year to be there. Now you must go and find someone who does Umundao. Now you must find this one who does Istunya. I get to have a choice for how many years? And how many uh, the processes include whatever your ancestors guide me to do. I've got standard processes. Ukula is how do I explain processes to you? Okay, no work I say to it's fine. Eh eh because the secret. Oh, okay, I'll tell you. The secret. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The secret. No, Mara. It involves. When I'm using the tool, I'm not. I'm going. I'm going to anger. I'm trying to be cautious about. I'm cool. I'm involved. Oh, I'm shellless. And the process is going to be bad. I'm trying to be cautious about. Once you get that and you come out of there, Ola, Ushel, Ola, I'm cool. My daughter was asking me the other day, and and I, and I can also see with you as well. Is it is it is it is it something that is natural, or is, is it them speaking to you when when you breathe and you go, hey? Because my daughter would be scared sometimes. I'm like, no, babe, don't be. And then I have to explain to her, like, can we explain that? Oh my. And and do you have to always respond to them if, like, no, um, your knees or, or something? Not Sometimes, sometimes you can respond to them if you also, want. You are just with them. You just with They're them. They're just saying, "Aru shebi riri." Oh na bari mkulo. Okay, I'll tell you. Sure. Eh, bari riri. And sometimes they do go like in overdrive where you've got it now, like melula lel. You know, you're always listening. What are they saying? Are they saying something? Are they warning you about something? What what what's like what's going on? You've always got to be woke wherever you are and in your space. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how crowded a space is. You got to stay woke. Mawe nyanga. Mkulu. Eh mau bodla. Go bodla bona. You know, there's my wife used to get so confused because ning ning mm, I'd go uh, and and then I'd go, excuse me. And she said, why why are you saying excuse me? And I'd say, no, I see those. Oh, I'm just bodily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm being I'm being pussy cold. I see those, baby. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You need to excuse me. Eh, mar my those we are isua. Hmm. Mkulu, it's. But but sorry lah, and I'm not those. I need to, but do you? Mama heading, but sorry lah. And there's always work and energy where it comes to them. There's always a movement. Even if you look at an ocean flowing or the river flowing, there's that movement. And that movement needs to come out somehow. It's communication. It's response. It's answer. It's conversations. Nothing to fear. Miss Tala to come spend a little time with me. How old is she? She's eight. Oh, mungu mungu is. Yeah, tell her to come spend some time with Goko, and be with other Gokos. Just come and see. Like we saw Joyela, you know. Hmm. We saw Joyela, as she's now watching you. Mkulu. You've had an incredible journey. You've had a successful acting career. Should we expect you back on these big screens? Uh, more movies what, and what, series. What work are you doing now? More movies and series. I'd like to do that more than Soapy. Soapy took away a lot of my time, generations, and sitting. They were so full time that I was not able to pay attention to much of my lousy work. Being a consultant, I'm a weekendy. Maybe if I could, being a lab, I'm a weekendy. It was just becoming. A lot, especially with the influx of Amatwasani that needed to take in. But they pay well, though. Generations and Isting. It wasn't for the money. Or oh, you disagree? Excuse me. Oh, I don't know. 
Okay, let's not get into that one. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, no, let's not have that conversation <laughs> <Okay>. right now. <laughs> because I think we, we assume as South Africans, good Simbona, good generations every day. Right. You know? She's in almost every scene. She's carrying the show. So why are you being a little hard ass about, not even a little, why are you being so hard ass about salary negotiations? To see my worth. And the type of contracts they had then, were they royalty based? If maybe Generations or Isitimo oh, gets bought no. in Nigeria or in, in Australia, Can I tell you something about do you guys get industry? paid royalties for even reruns? Mkulu, that's the problem in our industry in South Africa. Uh, we are still ahead in the music industry because at least our toll am a royalty. Uh, every lead in every show should get royalties. Basically, there's a seven-day period that your contract exists, exists for. And that includes repeats of the show within that seven-day period. Outside of that seven-day period, whether it's in South Africa or outside of South Africa, your leads need to now get residuals, royalties. Have you ever... I don't know how many actors have been trying to hunt down the residuals. Nothing. Um... I remember actors were even, actors, performers, people, when we had, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it here. Yeah, say it, that's fine, yeah. Encore, yeah. And it was lovely to see ourselves being, you know, rerun and Even made us nice to see myself on my first TV show fun, yeah. as a 19-year-old. Exactly. Did like, you get, wow. Did you get residuals for that? No, I didn't. And you should have. <laughs> I didn't. And that is the problem. And the minute... People, performers started saying, Mara, guys, why are we not getting something? Yana? Because our faces are on your screen. You are watching all of these shows over again. Okay, uh, they quickly took it down. About to shut down. And these are the injustices that we're suffering. It's very, very difficult. We, sh we shouldn't be sokoling as artists. We shouldn't just be relying on the project that we've got there and then we should be getting residuals we should be when we're out of a job and things are still running with our faces and our voices and everything on it we should be getting paid you know and i think you see this kind of abuse mina angzwaninga abuse ne whether it's abuse of relation angzwaninga abuse and i started sitting with myself and going as in let abuse, like, let me abuse. You know you should be, even to hunt down my residuals is such a big process. And the minute I even raise flags, you shut me out of the industry. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now you've closed doors for me. You've taken me off your own show. Now you've closed doors for me. These are the injustices that are, a lot of artists are suffering. Um, how are we going to get this right? I don't know. We'll probably only all get it right if we all decide to do a shutdown together and we're all just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But these are the injustices that we are suffering. And as I was saying, abuse. it's a form of abuse. You're taking advantage of me. You're taking me for granted. You're taking something from me that you do not deserve. I don't... I'm, I do not agree with physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse. I've literally taken myself out of abusive relationships. So why am I subjecting myself to this kind of abuse? I'm working for paycheck to paycheck every single day. I was like, ah, I'm going to seven zero eight once. Music? Absolutely love music. Have not really been going to studio as much as I should be, but I have been. We should jump into Stu. Bona. I haven't been into the studio in a while. Uh, well, it's been a few months, but I'd love to. Let's do it. Yeah, that would be lovely. For the sake of the music. I love the music. The, like, mu the music brought me here. I'm who I am because of the music. Because of the music. Yeah. Music is everything. Music and I miss God. the music. I miss it too. And God has given us these gifts. I would do, and we should use them. We should use them. Music. The frequencies in music are so beautiful. 
This is why we use so much music in spiritual work. When you're meditating, that those beautiful sounds that you hear, ikupu, music earths us, it connects us, it puts us at one with God. Do you know? I guess that's why they say isangoma. It's those of a song. Ingoma is song. Ubungoma is your people are rooted in song and you're off song. And that's why I guess Ikupunai Shaiwa, you'll find people in their feet grounded and bakita and being in touch with the earth, right? Ubungoma. It's those of song. Oh, another one. Ah. Will you put this away? Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you, my it's daddy. your birthday, man. Another one is fine. It's your Thank birthday. You. Mm, and Ubungo, it's so those of song. Mm. Do you know, since we are like, you know, exchanging knowledge here, do you know music? Mm. Excuse me. And I've also heard of the uh, different frequencies that also have been manipulated of music. Exactly. <laughs> for it to be against us instead of it being for us. And we don't know that. We just we pump the music all the time. We're not aware that the fre <coughs> frequency is not the actual right, correct frequency. Go research it, guys. Research it. I watched a documentary on water and how different frequencies in music. You've seen this yeah, one. Yeah. You've seen this one. Even on a metal plate where they put it there and the shapes that it and changes. And how it changes. Just, oh, the power how it of music. affects the frequency oh. of water. Yes. How classical music will make water, you know, sit in a different way. How metal kind of makes water go like this. How uh, that was a good documentary. I didn't. I, I haven't watched it, but I've you seen haven't? the clips. I've seen a lot of clips. You should watch it. What water does to us, and our taps. How our taps are designed. This is why you want to get to a point where you are. Getting water in like, what do we call these things? Dispensers. Yeah. What, what do we call them? They dispensers, ne? Uh, have. I don't know if you're going to suit. King. The filter. The filter. Hey, I'm going to suit. Hey, I'm going to suit. Hey, I'm cool. What do you want to do? The water filter, ne? Get it right because at least they could make a maid. So that fluoride and everything that is in the water, they're going to suit. The third eye, you are managing to clean them out. That's why you want pure water, right? Because even the journey that the water travels just to get to us and to the taps already affects what the water is going to do to you. Mm, I get you. It's a effect. High flow. Yo. You're amazing, man. Welcome thank you. Tevagiti. Thank you for celebrating your birthday with us. We appreciate you. Well, thank you for <laughs> making me just remember so much. You're so amazing. And I, and I don't even think this was enough. I think you have to come back and we get into deeper knowledge. Because we're an educational platform. We love knowledge. We love learning. We learn from different people all the time. And thank you for coming to share with us, you know? <laughs> thank you for having me. What are you up to next? What, are the, what is the future looking like? Uh, a lot of initiates, nice. which I'm not even stressing about. Like, it's, you know what? You're pouring it's yourself into the new generation. And we've got to do it positively and beautifully. Not, we've also got to kind of like shift how Uktwasa has been, Mkulu, because um, Gobelas have. A lot of gobelas have taken a lot of power from this work, like Imina Gobela. And we've abused our power. And we've abused Abantwanabin. Yeah, I've also heard of other gobelas who take advantage of little girls. Very sad, bad stories, you know? There's been, there's been a few of those. And I want to take what I'm doing with my initiates um, is just to take it back to a zen. Thank you. A peaceful space. Why should you not be happy, Mautwasa? I think you're not losing your funny clothes. I see seven your funny clothes. God, why must you leave your home 
to come into my home just to feel like you are being stripped of your dignity. Ka. Just because we are Kukala, it doesn't make you a a domkop a mumish. We are Kukangoba Usoni Pa Ilozilam, Lelu Kulisa Ilozilako. You are Lent Onipo. Everything else, trust and you should be happy. Elena be happy. I believe in teaching them about Zen and centering and being one with themselves and in the earth. Already, Ugukula Ebunyangeni is stressful enough. Why must I still add more stresses on Amatwasaniwam? Mabayo Pula. Uzo Pula Ganjani, Uzo Pupa Ganjani, Igo Bella, my salute stressor, Mkulu. Masisloni pe amatwasani, arishompe matwasani aruna. Ariba hudiseng, ariba hudiseng hanke. Mar ariba hudise kalerato. Kalerato. So go as a coconya bong as swam kulunkulak busi sabagin babe nani. Seven a kesha, nani futi. Leuila holo shite around it means a lot. Thank yes. you. Yes, my kind. Chosani. Amen. Chos. Guys, people are doing great things with their lives and their gifts. Can't run away from your gift forever. Embrace your gifts. That gift that God has given to you. You're not gonna be successful through some other thing that you're still gonna do. That which you've been gifted is the one that's gonna change your life. And it's the one that's gonna give you the life that you've sowed, that you feel you deserve, and that you deserve, actually. That gift. So it's happened within you. If that gift is teaching children karate, if that gift is singing, if that gift is running, being an athlete, whatever it is, you know? So I wish you guys all of the best, and I hope um, there were some good insights that were shared on today's episode, and you might have learned something from it. Hustlers and Squatters, we appreciate you again. We'll see you on the next video. Go follow her social media platforms, Go check out her work, go Google her, and go find out more about what she has to offer. She's been in the game for a while, you've heard her story, and she still has a lot to offer for many more years to come. See you on the next video. This is The Hustler's Corner.